Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for lifespan development, and in it we're looking at the second online quiz for Chapter 6, which is on adolescence. The first question in this quiz is, which of the following is an example of a primary sex characteristic? And the choices are breast development, vocal features, pubic hair, or fallopian tubes. Well, we're talking about primary sex characteristics, and so the answer is fallopian tubes. If I can get, there we go. Um, anyhow, it's the sex organs. And so for females, uh, girls and women, ovaries, the presence of ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus and vagina, again, the primary, the, you know, the ones that are always there. And for males, the testes, penis, scrotum, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, the things that are always there that biologically, um, uh, define a person as male or female. Now I realize there's more to it than that, but you get the idea. It's not the, uh, the secondary characteristics that come later but there's the ones that are always there. Okay. What is believed to trigger pubertal, excuse me, pubertal changes uh, such as menarche in girls? The uh, choices are age, height, weight, or breast development. Well, um, you know, some of these are the results of uh, pubertal changes. And so it turns out the research supports that actually that is weight. It doesn't happen at a particular time, but the body weight seems to have more to do with it. In fact, uh, here's a chart for some a very recent research article. And what we have here on the left is the age of menarche, so when they first had their period. Now, these are in months, but they conveniently put them in 12. So the bottom there is 10 years old, then 11, then 12 years old, 13, 14, and 15 years old at the top. Um, and you see that the obese and overweight girls are having their, their distribution here is lower down. These are called box plots, and they show the distribution in that uh, that thick line in the very middle is the median half rider below that. Um, and you can see theirs is the lowest. Normal weight's kind of spread all over the place. But the underweight, man, they waited a lot longer. You know, their median is is nearly 14 years old as opposed to 10, 11, you know, 12 years old for the, um, the obese or overweight girls. So there's a big difference there. All right, question number three. Mike's parents understand that at 16 he needs more rest than he is getting. That's true in general. They have a strict bedtime of 10 p.m. on school nights. Unfortunately, Mike is wide awake and cannot sleep. Which of the following explains this situation? The choices are puberty, phase delay, increased testosterone levels, or sleep deprivation. Well, sleep deprivation is the problem. Um, the answer here is what's called phase delay. Uh, excuse me, phase delay. Now, it's, a, it's kind of a funny thing. The best illustration I have actually is a Calvin and Hobbes cartoon about being unable to wake up in the morning and being unable to go to sleep at night because his internal clock is on Tokyo time. But uh, what, the way the book explains it is that there are actual changes in the brain. So these are biological changes, and they push back sort of the sleepiness clock. That's the phase delay. So they don't even start feeling tired until really late, maybe 11, 12, or later. Um, they, and they still they need the more sleep, like nine hours. But the problem is you got to get up for school. And so there's this, uh, there's this mismatch between the, the physical clock and sort of the social or regulatory clock. Um, and that's part of what the phase delay is. Okay, question number four. Psychoanalytic theory, that's Freud, suggests that anorexic young girls are most prone to what? Anger, depression, sexual fears, or substance abuse? Well, if you're Freud, the one you're going to be focusing on right here is C, sexual fears. Um, I didn't want to put pictures of any skinny, bony people, um, so I just got this one instead. Now, the idea here is, is psychoanalysis has a lot to do with about early childhood and relationships with parents, and that psychoanalytic theory says that anorexia um, helps avoid some scary things, that sex is scary uh, for uh, a young girl. The, the thought of getting pregnant can be very scary. Remember, especially Freud did his theorizing before birth control was common. Um, and so the idea here is that by being anorexic, they just like don't go through puberty and they don't become sexually viable and they still look like girls. That's the idea. And that that way they don't have to separate from their families. They don't have to assume adult responsibilities. That's the theory. Okay. That's the theory. Um, I don't know how much uh, evidence there is to support it, but it's a, uh, it's a, you know, theory's been around for a long time. Okay. 
Question number five, which of the following age groups has the highest percent of all dropouts? Now we mentioned this in class the other day. The choices are 15, 16 years old, 17, or 18 year olds. And again, the, you always have to choose from the options that are presented to you. You may remember uh, we talked about this and the answer is 18. And here's the chart that shows it. And what you wanna look at is the very bottom left where it talks about age. 15 to 16 year olds, only 2% dropout. You get up to the 20 to 24 year olds, 24% dropout. Uh, you know, again, they are high school students. And But what you can tell is that the older the students get, the higher the dropout rate. It makes sense the more options you have the, or the more things that have happened that make, you know, ne necessary or, or what have you. But it there's a monotonic progression. The older the student, the more likely the risk of dropping out. So if you're given the choice from 15 to 18, it's gonna be 18. All right, question number six. During adolescence, teens may begin to assert independence and remove themselves from normal family activities in favor of working, hanging out with friends, and participating in sporting activities. Which of the following will adolescents normally experience during this time? Well, the choices are feelings of distrust and dislike for their parents feelings of self-anger and, and inadequacy, feelings of love, loyalty, and respect for their parents, uh, feelings of contempt and disgust for peers. Well, I'm sure we can all imagine uh, lots of situations where people have felt each one of these things. But interestingly, the one supported by uh, recent research is C, feelings of love, loyalty, and respect for their parents. Look, see, here is my loving adolescent and parent. And I gotta tell you, it's hard to find a picture of uh, adolescent being loving with their parent because there's just this idea that all teenagers hate their parents and that it's just full of conflict. The nice thing is to know that that's not fundamentally what it is. Even though there is this separation and there's this creation of independence, there is on the whole still generally positive feelings between uh, children and parents. Okay, number seven, adolescence is a time of increased relationship with peers. How do they define relationship expectations during this time period? Uh, so the idea here is uh, the first choice is judgment, availability, and challenging thinking, or acceptance, mutual understanding, and intimate self-disclosure, or consistent morals, romance, and reliance. And the third one, excuse me, the last one is loyalty, intimacy, and reliance. Well, there's a tricky list. And if you want to get credit for this question, you're going to pick B acceptance, mutual understanding, and intimate self-disclosure as the things that peers, that uh, that adolescents are looking for in their peer group more than anywhere else. And, you know, here's just my stock photo of uh, happy, attractive teens um, who all have shiny white teeth. Anyhow, um, question number eight. In general, how long is the gap between initial attraction and disclosure of sexual orientation for same-sex orientations? <laughs> They should really say for adolescents with same-sex uh, attraction, what have you. Um, and so this is between realizing, for instance, that you're gay or lesbian and telling somebody that the, the, how far apart are those two things, you know. Or, and put another way, is how long is somebody in the closet? How long before they come out? And the choices here are, are six years, eight years, ten years, and twelve years. And holy Moses, those are all really long. Um... The sad thing is that the answer is, you know, 10 years, 10 years pass between the time a person realizes that they are gay or lesbian and before they're willing to tell anybody about it. Um, and anyhow, in view of this, I've chosen a little Keith Haring cartoon. National Coming Out Day was just about two weeks ago on October 11th. So uh, if you missed it, just go ahead and observe it now. It's a wonderful thing to do. So. Um, Let's not have it take 10 years. Question number nine. Which of the following would be a current marker of adulthood? The choices are marriage, children, financial independence, or graduation from college. So the idea here is at what point do people feel like they are adults? And um, interestingly, it's not marriage or children or graduation. It's financial independence. Um, because a lot of people actually do get married. Well, for instance, they're in college. They may even have kids while they're in college. They may graduate, but still not totally feel like they've transitioned to adulthood if they're still being supported by others. Now, part of this is because it, 
financial independence is a hard thing to develop. You know, again, it requires putting across, you know, the desire to spend and, and, and replacing it with the ability to save, which is a very hard thing for basically anybody to do. But anyhow, that is seen as one of the major contributors uh, that adolescency of marking the transition into adulthood. And um, we have just one last question here. Which of the following was the most likely doctoral degree earned by a woman in 1991? So that's, that's a little while ago. Um, then the choices are mental health therapist, nuclear scientist, biologist, or architect. Well, in as much as there are not many doctoral degrees in architect, we can cross that one off. Uh, the other three, though, it's actually mental health therapist. We're in a psychology class, so it shouldn't be too surprising. Here's a little bit of data. Um, you know, we're actually looking at in between time here. Um, but you can see, for instance, I like this one. It says women earned more than half of all doctorates in 2009. Um, it's, it's, it's been a trend in that direction, and I imagine it will continue. Anyhow, that is the end of the second online quiz for Chapter 6 on Adolescence in the course Lifespan Development. Thanks for watching.